right, but on my left. There's, there's the mic. You might stand so we can see you and hear you better. Uh, good afternoon, President. Um, just welcome to Ireland firstly and thanks for your speech. My name is Juno McEnroe I'm with the Irish Examiner newspaper. I just wanted to ask you, you met President Sarkozy recently in France. Um, can you give us an idea of what his stance is on Ireland's finances and if the President is going to be willing to allow us to get some form of a cut on the interest rate of our bailout? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to take that now, or we we'll take, take it now? Take sure. So I met uh, President Sarkozy, I think, last uh, Wednesday in uh, in, uh, in Paris at the Elysee Palace, and we discussed this issue. I said it also to the Taoiseach uh, just a few hours ago. I think we are discussing solutions and. I think there, is, there are really possibilities of getting an outcome of this issue. I can't say more on this because what, what, what I am saying now when I go into details, I would rather be unhelpful to get a solution. But uh, I left Paris more positive than I ended Paris on this particular point. Thank you. Francis de Rossa is a member of the European Parliament from the Labour Party here in Ireland. Uh, thank you very much. And um, thank you, uh, Mr. Van Rompuy, for your speech here today. I'm very pleased that you're here, and I'm very pleased that we do have the President of the Council, a full-time President of the Council, both myself and Rich, Rich, Richard Corbett, who accompanies you here today, were some of those who argued for that position in the Convention on the Future of Europe. Um, because we believed that it would help to Europeanise the decision-making uh, at the Council level. Uh, uh, basically because of the, the point that uh, I think that um, uh, Brendan Halligan made earlier, that the, 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 the future of small states depends on uh, all states acting in solidarity with each other, and that a, a EU union which is dominated by intergovernmentalism um, by big states in particular, uh, it favours them if we stick to intergovernmentalism. So I very much welcome the creation of this post. But it seems to me that there is a drift towards intergovernmentalism at this point in time. And it is very risky, in my view, for the future of Europe. Um, and I would ask you if you, if you, if you have a comment uh, on that and how we can avoid the, uh, the development of that. One further point, you mentioned that the whole purpose of the austerity measures at the moment is to defend the uh, European social mo model again, which is uh, European social model is one of the reasons I'm involved in your European politics. But it seems to me that the austerity uh, being imposed at the moment by the member state governments uh, is likely to destroy our social model rather than protect it and, okay. and defend it. Okay. In particular, the pressure on uh, the European Union budget, the uh, the failure to uh, take on board the idea of European bonds, uh, the idea of a financial transaction tax, all of these things are a necessity, in my view, if we're going to build a European social model. Can I ask you to address that? Good. Thank you. Commit free rule. That was good. Um, would you mind if we took two or three together? Because I know you're under pressure of time. And yeah, I will take one question and then I give it. One question and then, well, maybe if I just, if you forgive me, there's a deputy here from the Parliament. Deputy Robert Dowds. Uh, Robert Dowds, uh, Labour Party uh, TD. Uh, fear fall to Roth and Shaw Welcome, Mr. Um, there's a phrase in Irish, a proverb, which says, which means that you don't have strength unless people pull together. And I think that is a very useful phrase for Europe. Uh, to take to heart at, the, at present, not just us in Ireland, but um, right across the European community. And I speak as somebody who is very strongly pro-European, and I think for the protection of all the countries of Europe and, and for, the, for the protection and continuance of our uh, strong economies, we must pull together. And so, so that, that is where I am coming from. But I think, I think uh, the situation we are in at present puts 
the European um, ideal very much under pressure. And I, I, I appreciate you probably can't answer this question, but I want you to take back that people in this country are really being squeezed. Our, our young people are leaving, our people in their 30s are, are being squeezed by very, very high mortgages. And we really need to get out of this crisis as, as quickly as possible. I appreciate we have to do a great deal because uh, of the foolishness of our banks. But there is a responsibility also in Europe. And while I would like you to uh, say what uh, they might do to, to ease our burden, I do want you to take that message back Thank to you. Europe. Thank you. Thank you. So, Actually, there are two kinds of, of topics raised. First, on the so-called intergovernmentalism. And, yeah, I know a lot of people are making reference to the role of two big countries, especially of France and, 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 and Germany. But remember, uh, there was a close cooperation between uh, Chancellor Adenauer and President de Gaulle or between François Mitterrand and Helmut Kohl, and even uh, the, between Chirac at that time and Chancellor Schroeder. You remember the, the Iraq war and the, the anti-American stance of those two countries on, this, on that issue. So there's, uh, there's always been a strong link between Germany and France. If they don't agree, Europe has a problem. If they agree, it is not sufficient that they agree. Others also have to agree. It is what we call in philosophy a necessary but not a sufficient condition for having a good outcome. And in the European Council, we are all there. The President of the European Commission and the 27 member states, and we have to take decisions by unanimity. If a small country don't agree, we have no agreement. And I can you give, give, give you a lot of examples, even of the last year. So unanimity is in the European Council a protection for the small countries. And our Chancellor Merkel said, we have now the Lisbon Treaty. The debate between intergovernalists and community methods is in some way over. We have our institutions with a strong and big role now for the European Parliament, the community instrument, the utmost community instrument. We have now new institutions, the President of the European Council, a stronger European Parliament. We have a commission with the right of initiatives. And we define their role. What we now have to do is that those institutions work together for the same purpose, for the same objective. And I consider it my role to make that they work together, what, they, what is called the union's method. And let, let's put behind us the, the quarrels between the governmentalists and community, uh, the community method. We have the Lisbon Treaty that put an end to this theological debate, and let's work together between the institutions, each in their own role. My second uh, reaction is, I was, and uh, the chairman was so, so kind to recall it, I was uh, in the 19th Minister of the Budget. And we had a public debt level of 135%. And the deficit, I mentioned it, of 7.5%. Can you imagine that the Belgian nation on his own could live long with that kind of public debt level? Actually, we didn't need Europe to say that we have to decrease that public debt level and to decrease that deficit. But we, at that time, said also, it is the fault of Europe. We had to meet the Maastricht criteria. And so instead of saying, we need all this for safeguarding our future, because with the aging of the population, we just, just can't afford that kind of public debt level or that kind of deficit. 
So we, ha we had a lot of national reasons to decrease debt and deficit, but we preferred also to say it is the fault of Europe. So let, not, let us not blame the others. We have our own responsibilities and we have our own responsibilities uh, uh, in respect of the future, as I said. In order to save our social system, we need sustainable public finances. All, otherwise, all this will collapse. And so it is not what we are doing now. And I, I repeat, we had to do this for also for national reasons. What we are doing now is something that is from utmost importance. It's not to destroy our social system. It is at the end to save our social system. And Europe is, yes, indeed, is showing solidarity. Otherwise, we haven't provided 85 billion loans to Ireland. We have to discuss the interest rates further on. Otherwise, we haven't, we, we couldn't, we hadn't provided 110 billion for Greece, and we will even do more, even do more. You know, in the countries who are providing loans, there is a big discussion on solidarity, as there is a big discussion in countries facing problems, huh? blaming some of them, not all of them, some of them blaming Europe. But there is also, there are also lo a lot of discussions about so-called transfers over so-called um, yeah, solidarity, but not, in, in, not in, a, in a very noble way, in, in some kind of pejorative term. And we have to, to fight on both fronts. We have to fight in those countries with weak economies, and we have to fight in those countries who are <clears throat> in some way reluctant in parts of their public opinion for showing solidarity. But we do it. And the countries with weak economies are showing a lot of political courage to take the necessary measures. And at the end of the day, in those countries, even with the reluctant public opinion, governments take their responsibilities, providing hundreds of billions of loans so that the Eurozone can survive and those countries <coughs> can survive. So I'm much more positive about what is happening today. Of course, it takes a lot of time and effort and discussions. It takes some too much time, I agree. We are living in democracies, national democracies, and democracies of a democracy at the European level. But at the end of the day, the result is at most, the most important thing. Not what, 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 what the, uh, no, not the discussions and, and all, all the time lost, but we, were, we, we will be judged by history by our, by our results. And that I'm quite happy that each time the result was positive, and I hope so that in the Greek case it will also be the case. Well, thank you very much indeed, Mr. President, for those concluding.